Welcome to part 4 of this 5 part video series looking at creating Revit models from point cloud data. In this part I will be demonstrating how we can manage the point cloud inside Revit to make modelling easier. We will look at working with the view range, sometimes referred to as the visible range, and we're going to look at cropping the point cloud as well as altering the point cloud visibility. In the previous tutorial we cut a section through the point cloud and added levels using the point cloud as a guide. So let's get started. As we can see from this planned view of the point cloud, there's a lot going on and we need to be able to isolate objects in order to model them. For example, if we want to start modeling the walls, it's useful to be able to cut through the point cloud to clearly reveal the walls that we want to model. Let's start with the view range. The extents of the point cloud visible in a plan or section view are impacted by the view range. It allows us to cut slices through the point cloud to more easily identify features. We can access view range from the properties palette and if you look under extents we have the view range. This controls the extent of the view depth in the plan view. If we click edit a window will open and here we can adjust the values depending on what we want to reveal in the point cloud. Specifically, the portion of the point cloud visible between the bottom extent and the cut plane is visible. So, if we want to see just the walls at level 0, we can change the bottom value here to 1 and click OK. And that gives us a half metre slice through the point cloud. The bottom of the slice is 1 metre above the ground and the top of the slice is 1.5 metres above the ground. This allows us to clearly see the walls, which will make modelling them much easier. So depending on what you are modelling, you can adjust the cut plane to suit. You may, for example, want to make several views of level 1 and at different cut planes. We will often need to adjust the view range as we continue in creating our model. Next, we're going to look at the Manage Links tool. This can either be accessed from the Manage tab, and then we just go to Manage Links, or from the Insert tab. So we click Insert and then Manage Links. It can also be accessed from the Project Browser by right-clicking on the Revit links and selecting Manage Links. When we open the Manage Links, we can see all the files that are linked with this project. So if we click on the Point Cloud tab, then we can see the link name, whether or not it's loaded, and where it is stored on the hard drive. And if we click on the file, then we can see some options. We can reload the cloud, unload the cloud, or add more clouds to our project. We can remove the point cloud from the project when we're done modeling. Now let's look at crop region. This scope box is used in plans, sections, and elevations. The tool is using a region to define an envelope that governs the point cloud's visibility. Later, we will look at section boxes, which control the extent of the point cloud, which is visible in the 3D view. The crop region command can be accessed from the properties palette under extents and you can see crop region visible. So we're going to check crop view and crop region visible. Now you can see that there is a box around the point cloud which allows me to hide or reveal the area of interest in my point cloud. This tool is available for plans, sections and elevation views and is view specific so it only affects the view that we're working on. In this case, level zero. We can push and pull the control points to minimise or to expand the area of interest in the point cloud. So now we come onto the section box, which works just like the crop region, but in the 3D view. So I'm going to the 3D view and on the properties palette, I will check section box. The box can be rotated using the rotate command from the modify tab and the box can also be pushed and pulled by dragging the control arrows to isolate or reveal a portion of the point cloud within the view. Now I'm going to click the view cube to get a top-down view and I'm going to select and rotate the section box using the rotate command from the modify tab. And I can also drag and pull the control arrows. Using a section box to zero in on the area you're working on reduces the amount of visible elements that Revit has to process. Point clouds are great, but they can slow down your Revit session, especially if you're navigating in 3D and your point cloud is quite large. 
Now we're going to come on to displaying of point clouds. Now the visibility of point clouds is view specific. You can hide or change the appearance of point clouds by using visibility graphics. So we're going to click on view and then visibility graphics. So if we click on the point cloud tab, what we can do here is hide or show the entire point cloud or individual scans if I don't want to see them in this view. Nope, said earlier, this is view specific. But I will go ahead and hide the point cloud by unchecking this box, show point cloud in view, and I'll click OK. Now we can see that in this view, the point cloud is no longer available. So now let's bring the point cloud back again by opening the visibility graphics and check the point cloud in the view box and click OK. Another tool that may be useful in the visibility graphics dialog is the color mode. So let's open the visibility graphics again and we can see the color mode here. If we click on where it says RGB, we can see a drop down list to choose from. If imagery was taken with the scanning, then we can choose to view that by selecting RGB. We can also choose from single color, elevation, intensity and normals. So let's change the color mode to normals. Basically with the normal color mode selected, each point is displayed based on the normal direction of the point. This can be helpful for seeing which angle or plane a surface is on. Now the color scheme for this is built into Revit and is uneditable. Now we come on to the select links option. This is at the lower right corner in Revit. It allows us to select link files and their elements. The select links is locked when the red X is shown. Now you can see that although I am trying to select my point cloud, I cannot do so because the select link is locked. If I unlock the select links by just clicking on it, I am now able to select my point cloud. I would recommend keeping it locked to avoid mistakenly moving the point cloud. So I'm just going to go and lock the point cloud once more. And finally, we're going to look at section and elevation views. Section and elevation views work for point clouds in the same way that they work for Revit objects. We can always use the section cut and elevation to reveal a section of the point cloud. I will go to level zero and cut a section through a staircase. Now I will uncrop my view by unchecking the crop view and crop region visible from the properties palette. What I'm going to do is cut a section through the stair hall here. Now I click go to view and in this section for example I can see and count how many risers I will need from floor to floor. The elevation views will provide us with more details on the building facades, so let's look at one of those. I'm going to open the north elevation. We can see quite a lot of window detail here. In general, we'll be using a combination of all the tools and commands shown in this tutorial to find, hide and display what we are looking to model in the point cloud. This concludes part 4 of this tutorial. In part 5, we will start modelling elements in the point cloud. Thank you for watching and see you in the next part. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe.